So speaking of a little unexpected news, uh, y'all like Spy Kids? That's still in your in your nostalgia. Is that is it now the time to cash in on nostalgia points for the Spy Kids property? Well, apparently Netflix thinks so, as they're rebooting Spy Kids, but with the original director Robert Rodriguez returning to direct. That's kind of weird to me that you're rebooting a property, but keeping the original guy. That's it's not quite the same, but it's like you're selling a house and you're selling it back to its original owner. Like you bought a house and then you're gonna sell it back to the original owner who's gonna do stuff to it. Like, <laughs> like, like <laughs> the bank took the house and so now the families have finally got the money to buy their house back. Yeah. <laughs> like, ooh, uh, ooh, I don't like that. That feels grubby. I don't like that. But like, <laughs> Robert Rodriguez, I think did the first three, maybe even the fourth one too, that no one ever remembers. Um, a fourth. Yeah, with without Alexa Vega and Junie. I don't. No, so it's not. So it's not Spy Kids. So we don't care. No, they're in it. I think as adults, which, I mean, they're old enough now. I was just about to go there. If this movie is instead of Carlo Gugino oh, and Nintendo Banderas, we have oh. adult versions of uh, Carmen and Juni, whose own kids are becoming the Spy Kids, then you might get me more interested. Bring back Steve Buscemi, and I'm all on board, man. <laughs> you get that great dialogue, like, you think God sits up in heaven because he's afraid of what he created? I'm going, where are you going God, with this Spy God, Kids 2? God, God, like, and that was, and to me, that's why you bring Robert back. Because that, like, that is like a very, very oddly specific charm that Robert brings to these films. They're made for two dollars and in his garage. Like, maybe this yeah. time he can afford with Netflix money. He can afford an actual production company. <laughs> I don't think it matters if he can afford it or not. He's still gonna shoot it in his garage on a camcorder. Uh, like, I just, I. <sighs> okay, this is Netflix, right? So. <laughs> I believe it when I see it. I like. I just. Be, they are. This is in comparison to the other products, uh, like Redwall, Red, like Magic Treehouse, um, Narnia, it, um, Narnia. Like this actually has a director attached to it, so that's cool, and that actually gives it a little bit more validity of like, okay, so this could actually happen because before in that. Netflix kind of still is in this train, this uh, the, just this kind of groove of announcing stuff and like, hey, we acquired this property, guys, uh, and then doing nothing with it. So it's like, okay, all right, fine, whatever. But with Spy Kids, yeah, if I if I get to, to have Carmen on my screen again, I, you know, I was, is okay she still that. married to that? What's it from Big Time Rush? She, no, she's not married. There's no way. No, she's it's not Big herself. Time Rush. She's... No, no, no. no. She's that is Big Time Rush. She's for... married to that guy from Big Time Rush. No, no, no. Has no, a couple no. She's, kids. She's, she's single and she's waiting for to meet me, uh, uh -huh. obviously. Uh, <laughs> uh oh, brain blast. Oh, dude. No, just just throw out the entire Spy Kids concept. Throw Carmen out, throw Junie out. It's a machete spinoff. Another one, I it's, mean. Oh, it's no, another machete oh, spinoff, oh, no, 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 and it's just no, Danny no, no. Trejo reading the phone book. I don't care. Oh it's gosh. Danny Trejo, and I'm no. interested. I got it. Are you ready? So it is. So we come in with a ten episode season, and the the first episode where we meet Machete and we go about his adventures with Carmen and Junie's parents, leading up to, and he just kind of like does his own thing for a bit. And then the last episode is when they show up at his house uh, in the first movie. Like, oh, let, let's go. Like, let, let's see. Like, see what he was doing with the, with his life before before the first movie. I'd be I'd be okay with that. Although he would actually, you know what? No, he wouldn't look older. Older. He looks exactly the same. It's he really Bro. does. He doesn't, he doesn't age. No, he like <laughs> he was born old looking and just kind of stayed that way, like Morgan Freeman and Sam Cassell. My <laughs> only concern is. I, th because it's how Netflix kind of works, they're very much chasing trends. And I worry after his brief directorial stint on The Mandalorian season two and after the Book of Boba Fett, I think they're like, oh, 
just like Zoolander. Oh, Robert Rodriguez, he's so hot right now. Like, we, <laughs> we need to get him back for Spy Kids. Yeah. The rights are available? <laughs> Let's do it. Oh, he's so hot right now. I, I worry that's the mindset of like, oh, Robert Rodriguez yeah. is mainstream again? Sign that man up. Like, you didn't want to do it when Shark Boy and Lava Girl's rights were for sale. Avengers level crossover right there. Spy Kids. Dude. Crossover with Shark Boy and Lava Girl. And because it's such a big event, it's going to be a $30 budget. <laughs> I okay, like, but like, I would love to see a uh, uh, corridor a crew episode boy. with Robert no, Rodriguez. Sh- no, 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 I got you, I got you. I uh, could do a Shark Boy Lava Girl movie, and it, but it's like it's like Bojack Horseman, where like Shark Boy is like depressed and stuff because you know you say bring the back world Taylor Lautner, who's just like my career went yes. nowhere. <laughs> exactly do like with taylor and so it's like this whole like metaphor on his career and <laughs> god I, I i don't hate taylor i promise i promise i don't hate taylor <laughs>